turned out really well. I, I really like these uh, areas like this that you can end up seeing the, the mirror. This turned out real well down here with the mirror that comes down here and cut through like that. I think that turned out real nice. Well, it starts with selecting a good piece. So I happen to have a bunch of scrap pieces in an old chicken house that I've just kept. These are some black cherry boards. Some are cracked, some have knots and holes. They're just raw cut, been out here for a couple of years. And so, and just flipping through some of these, finding one that, you know, looks like it's gonna be a decent uh, piece. It's got some little knots and things like that in it. It'd be kind of fun. I've kind of dug around in here and found this one here has got a big crack down the middle, but what we can do is rip that in half and it's got some neat knots and things like that. We can cut it and take part of these pieces and flip them around and clean it up and I think it'll work pretty good. This piece is probably about six to seven feet long, so it's pretty long. Uh, we'll end up cutting it down uh, to whatever size we want to put the mirror, but let's go ahead and grab something like that and we'll get it cleaned up. Yeah, out here in the in the light it looks pretty good. It's got some areas that are a little soft, a little soft rot in here. We can carve that out. We've got some other little areas like this that will end up breaking that stuff out, torching that a little bit. Once we get some of the loose stuff out of there, that'll look real nice. This, I like this little knots and stuff that are in it. Just knock off some of the dead spiders. It's good to find a piece that's thick enough. These are about an inch thick that you can router out a spot for a mirror. Uh, I've seen people just put the mirror just across the entire back. I don't think it looks as good. Uh, if you can do it where you can router it out, uh, it ends up looking a lot better in my opinion. So, no, I think this is gonna look real nice. Let's get it in there and get this sucker cleaned up. So as it stands here on the table, this uh, is a lot longer than I thought it was. It's actually seven and a half feet long. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, just because I don't, I don't particularly care for this end piece here because it's there's not a lot of character or anything going on to it. I think what we'll do is go ahead and cut it, maybe just a skosh over, over five feet down here, and then cut just a little bit off the end down here to square it up. And that will eliminate some of the splitting and breaking that's going on at the end of this piece. And to get it down to a five foot mirror, which is a pretty standard, standard size, and I'll probably still have to have the mirror custom cut uh, to do it unless I can find a standard five foot mirror. It's best if you have an old mirror, you can custom cut the wood to fit the existing mirror you have. But if you don't have that, any glass shop can cut a mirror and you just have to tell them how thick you want it and whatnot. You know, that's kind of like when we did this one over here. Uh, I already had the mirror, and so I just custom did the, the piece to go around the mirror, and it worked out real nice. And that was a nice plate glass mirror that's a thicker, older mirror, so it's not wavy, which is really good. If you get the cheap mirrors, they get some wave to them. Well, that made it easy. It was already kind of split down the middle, so we'll cut, flip it over and get the other half of this cut and be ready to move on. We got that thing cut. It's looking good. I've laid it out kind of how I think I want this to, to look when it's going to be done here. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the edges of this thing off flat. You Honestly, you could leave it raw like that where it's kind of split towards the edge. Uh, I want the outside edge of this thing to be a little more finished on this particular piece. So find yourself something that you can use as a straight edge and go ahead and lay it out and mark it where you're going to rip that off. And then we'll run it through the table saw and I'll do that on both pieces. Uh, that way it gets a good straight edge on the outside as a kind of a finished edge on this particular one. That'll leave the middle part, the live edge, and the outside finished. Okay, we've got those cut. I've got the edges cut on them. I've got them ready to send through here. What I've got over here, if you want to come around, is my... Uh, 15 inch spiral cutter head planer. This is a Grizzly product. I've actually got several Grizzly branded products. That's because we live near a Grizzly store. So I've actually got a, a, a joiner as well as this planer and some other tools that we have from there. They tend to work really well. The spiral cutter head really makes a good cut. You can do this by just sanding it down, but this is gonna save so much time. So I'm gonna send it through a couple of times uh, on each side just to help clean it all up and then we'll lay it out on the table.
that we have this run through there a few times, I did it once on the back side, but also ran it through a couple of times on this front side. It really helps level it out and clean it up. There is a lot of imperfections in this wood, and that gives us some real opportunity here to really make some fun character with this. I'm gonna go through and actually dig out a lot of this little stuff here with the screwdriver. And then we'll go ahead, and once all that is dug out, there's also a big dead area in here where a branch was attached going off the other direction that I will dig some of this out as well and try to clean this up. And it's gonna end up leaving a big open area in here. And then we're gonna go ahead and go back when we're done removing some of those, we're gonna go ahead and sand it. And then we're gonna go ahead and take a torch to it. Now, some of these areas like this really turned out really well. I don't wanna to mess too much with it because it's really pretty thin. Uh, but the area where it has this hole through here is kind of fun and it'll torch up nice. Uh, these other little areas that didn't quite sand down, we'll just have to hit those with the hand sander because we're going to be hitting the whole thing with the hand sander. We'll have to get these areas that are here just to smooth them out to, uh, to blend them in. I also notice that when we cut this thing, I've got to go ahead and square up the edges, and I can tell that by lining up against this square piece down here. We can see that it's not square. If you have access to it, you have access to an actual square. That helps too because you can see that of course it's not not square but i also know that whenever i get these ends lined up i then will set this piece on top of this other piece and have to line this end up and, and remove some of this or some of this down here on this side probably to then slide this down to then even up even up this end where it'll end up being flush on this end because i want to keep I want to keep this character piece here and keep this character piece here. I can go ahead and lose a little bit of this flat off the end of this, and that'll help even it up and make it a real nice live edge in the middle. I got a little bit of work to clean up here, but it helps once you get it started and get it started with a uh, screwdriver because the screwdriver is small. If you've got a sharp one of these little pieces here, you can kind of run it along the edge and it just really just takes off those, the inner part there really well. And again, once I get a little bit more of this dug out of here, it'll be ready to go. I'm going to work down just a little further down here. I'd like to get a little bit more soft up until about there. So I'm gonna dig out a little bit more of that. And then this piece will probably be prepped, ready for sanding, and I gotta get the sides cut off. And then we'll be ready to torch it. I've got it trimmed up and evened up. It's exactly five feet, which is exactly the way that I wanted it, because that's how wide that I want it to be. Now what I have not yet determined is how tall that I want it to be. I don't currently have a mirror, so I'm gonna to have to go to a glass shop to get one cut, but I'm thinking I want this one to be long and maybe a little narrower, uh, so I may just space this out to where I feel like I want it to be before I measure it, but you can go as high or as low as you want to depending on your piece of glass. If you happen to have a piece of glass that's five foot by four foot, spread these out and it works just fine. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do next, I've got all the main parts chiseled out with my screwdriver and my chisel, so I'm ready to determine two things. One, do I wanna do anything with this flat edge? If I do, now's the time to do it. I've got a router and could router off an edge, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave this one just simple for now and just leave it just a squared off edge. And I'm probably not gonna do anything as far as torching that edge because of that. It's just gonna become just a straight, plain edge in the nice black cherry that we have. But I am gonna go ahead and get my torch ready to go. And I'm gonna go ahead and torch all of the openings including this beautiful opening that we had here that I wasn't expecting to be this big, but we're gonna go ahead and torch that too. Go ahead and hit the bark a little bit and hit the knots before we sand. If you don't have a specific torch, this is just one that says Mag Torch. It came with a propane bottle, but most any of these propane bottles, this is one from Coleman. I found it for a few bucks at a camping supply store. As long as it has the same fitting on the end, you can buy these, they're pretty cheap. And they screw right onto the end of this and allow you to adjust the flame. I'm it with the push of a button. 
turn it off, you just turn it on. I always do disconnect this when I'm done using it though because the seal may not be the best and if you leave this up and don't use it for a while, you may come back to an empty bottle. So just to save that from happening, just always just disconnect it when you're done. So somebody's asked me before, why is it a lot of times that I torch the edges of these? It's a good question. It's completely personal preference. You could leave it just all natural, just like that, as it looks. And it's not bad. I mean, it's got a few pieces that are, that are taken out of it. But the reason why I do it is really threefold. One is it hides, it hides areas like this that the bark has come off of. So if you're torching this and it's all kind of a consistent black, it hides that. The second thing it does is any of this natural moss and things like that that's growing on the outside of the bark, you can knock it off if you want to. Uh, I personally, after you torch it, it just it burns that right off. And then what's left is just a little bit of white that you can blow and it just comes right off. And it cleans it up. And the third reason is it adds a good set of contrast to whatever type of wood project you're working with. This being the black cherry, it, it has a lot of warm tones to it. And when you put the finish on it, it's got a little bit of a warmer feel to it. And this dark edge really contrasts with that really well, like I've done on this one over here. This one here, I went ahead and did the, did the torching on the edge like this, and then went ahead and hit some of these interior pieces like that. And it really helps bring out the contrast with the wood pieces in the dark that set back in there, especially areas that have kind of burled. Don't worry about getting a little bit outside the lines on this. When we give this the final sand, it'll take all this back down to the level as far as taking all this off the extra edge here. But as you can kind of see, it's starting to darken up all that inside edge. And when we put the uh, finish on this, it'll darken that up a little bit more and it'll also darken this up too. Let's knock out the other one. Now that we've got the initial sanding done after this has been torched, I've now got to determine where I'm going to put my mirror. So I'm going to have to line up where I want this and then measure it to router out the back edge where I'm going to want to have the mirror. This piece has a bunch of really cool holes in it. And so it's going to have some neat intricate holes that are going to end up up here that you'll be able to see all the way through. And again, this piece that goes all the way through here, and then it'll have some other little holes down here. So I've decided this is going to be the bottom of the mirror, and that's going to be the top. And I'm going to go ahead and mark out and router it down to somewhere in here. So leaving this bottom part and on the back side, router all this up through there so that I can set my mirror down clear into here. So this, you'll be able to see the mirror through these holes. Uh, some of these pieces I've done, for example, like this one over here, uh, I only ran the mirror down to there so you can see out the holes on those other side pieces. You can see through to the wall. Uh, on one like this, I'm actually gonna have it where you can see mirror through there. So that's gonna make things a little bit different with this one. On the top, I'm only gonna bring it down. I'm gonna bring it back far enough past this that it routers in that edge there and leaves this part hanging down so you can see the mirror through here, but it'll have a lot more uh, meat up there. And I'm gonna make that the top because I have to have something to hang this and I typically hang these with a French cleat. This particular one is a 30 inch heavy duty French cleat that's able to hold up to 300 pounds, which is going to be monster overkill. So I'll probably have to get a different one. But on the back side of this, you basically mount that on the back side in the center and it's got two interlocking pieces. We'll have a piece like this on the back side of this mirror. And then on the back side of the wall, we'll have another piece that will interlock into this so that they hold. And this one being 30 inches can strap across two studs uh, without any problem and be able to line it up and get it exactly centered in the room where you want it. So we may use it. I happen to have a couple extra of these uh, still here. So I might do that. I might grab one that only does about 150 pounds. This mirror, when it's all said and done, probably... Uh, I would guess might only be like 40 or so pounds, but we'll see when it gets done. So it probably, it's gonna be way overkill for this. But depending on the size of your mirror and the thickness, the mirrors do weigh a lot and the glass weighs a lot. So 
Again, if you just went with this a small mirror in between, like a thin one like this, you wouldn't need all that. If you decided to, you know, spread, spread this clear out like that and put a large piece of glass mirror in between uh, to take up more space on a wall, uh, you're gonna need more weight, weight for that. If it gets to be too big of a stretch, you may also want to have some support straps in the back that bridge behind the mirror uh, between these things as well. And I typically use some steel, uh, steel straps for that. But I don't think I'm gonna need it on this one, but let's go ahead and get it flipped over and get it routed out. I've got my areas marked off with an X and I'm gonna be taking that back and knocking it out just a little bit. When using a router, it's obviously a good idea to wear a face guard, goggles, glasses, face protector, face mask, respirator, have some fans going. Uh, you don't need to take off that much. I've only got it to where I'm just gonna take it off just a little bit to notch it out uh, for that mirror. So really only gonna come down about a quarter of an inch or a little bit more than a quarter of an inch uh, because I'm gonna be setting quarter of an inch glass in here most likely. Obviously just do the best you can. If your bit goes down a little too deep in a couple areas, it's fine as long as you don't have any real high points because that mirror is gonna sit, sit on there and cover that up anyway. We're just gonna be taking it down this length, the whole way down, and then we're gonna do the other one. It takes a little time to do it. I don't have a real large router bit uh, to be able to easily do this on, and I'm just freehanding it with that too. Uh, we could set it up on a table and try to do it a little bit differently, uh, but this is what I've got, and this is what I'm working with. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish knocking the rest of that off, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Alrighty, got all that routed out. Uh, it was a little tricky getting around some of this in here. It did chip off a few places, but it's not bad. I went ahead and ran the sand over it real quick just to kind of verify that I knocked down any possible high points that are going to be in that routed edge where that mirror is going to sit in there. I've also gone ahead and decided that I'm going to go ahead and do a 24 inch mirror. So we'll get one that's 24 inches wide, which will fit right into those notches there. And it's going to be five feet long. And that will give me a nice good size mirror in this piece here so that's what i'm going to order is a 24 inch wide by five foot long so two foot by five foot mirror and that'll place right in there now i've got this thing flipped upside i guess it flips like this that was the bottom i flipped it this way so i could router out the edges uh, one other thing i'm going to do before i get that mirror is i'm also going to go back with that torch and i'm going to lightly torch the back side of all this around these openings and the reason why I'm going to do that is because this mirror on this one's going to go all the way down to this back edge. And if there is a piece of this that does happen to lift off or warp a little bit away from the mirror, uh, and I'm thinking that might be the case with this little piece down here, then you won't see it or won't notice it that bad if it's dark behind it. If you've got a dark edge and the mirror and it separates even just like an eighth of an inch, you will be able to see the reflection of the back side of this edge and it'll be lighter colored. So I typically go ahead and just torch the back edge of this just a little dark before I glue it on. We've got our mirror on order and as long as we're waiting for that to go ahead and get done, I'm going to go ahead and use some of this uh, antique oil finish. This is a Minwax product. I've used it on a lot of things before. It's one of my favorite uh, finishes. If you haven't had a chance to see other things that I can do, check out the link up above and I'll put a link to that. But I'm uh, gonna go ahead and put on some rubber gloves and it's a good idea to use something you could throw away. I've got some old kids socks uh, that we were just gonna throw away. Just save those, an old rag works fine. Whenever you get done applying this, you're gonna wanna take those rags or socks and dispose of them properly, meaning putting them on some concrete or something so that they don't spontaneously combust or burst into flames. If you put this in a trash can full of sawdust, it does heat up. But to apply this, it's pretty easy. We're gonna put a liberal amount of this on here. And then just using your rag, we're gonna go ahead and just apply that by rubbing it around all over the product, including the darker areas up here that we we have uh, burned and just kind of getting that over all that and it'll seal that in there it'll make it look a little darker but it'll give it that contrast that we've been looking for and we're going to go ahead and do this over the entire entire project and then you're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes 
and then come back with a clean rag and we're going to buff it off. And that will give it a nice matte finish uh, to this piece. And then uh, decide if you want to apply another coat. If you do, you can apply another coat, give it 10 minutes, buff it off. You got to give it a good eight or 10 hours, I would say, in between coats. 24 hours is probably what's recommended on the bottle. The more coats you add, the glossier it gets. So let's go ahead and finish the rest of this and then we'll be ready for the mirror. We've got two coats of this, dried and polished and sat here for a couple of days. Buffed it off. It's got a real nice matte finish to it. It's got a lot of lovely color to it. Some of the sap wood and stuff in it. And I'm pretty happy with it. I'm really happy with how this area turned out over here, this darker area. Uh, it turned out real pretty. I think it's going to look really neat with that mirror coming through that, as well as coming through this here. I've got my mirror. It's over there. And uh, what we're going to do is flip flip these over and I'm trying to keep track with the bottom and the top here I'm gonna flip them over like that and do the same thing on that one and then get it ready to set this mirror and again we've torched those edges I went out to buy some mirror mastic he ended up coming back with some of this uh, this works fine too uh, anything that you've got that's an adhesive, this is a construction adhesive that you can see on here that it'll, it'll adhere to wood as well as glass, or in this case mirrors, it specifically says on there, uh, it works fine. So again, what I'm going to do is flip that one over, get it lined up, and then going to go ahead and put some of this on there, and then set that mirror down, and then we're going to go ahead and check it and wait a couple areas on it uh, just to press it down on there, and then we got to let it sit. So now that we've got that center down on there and pushed on there, I can see this corner is popping a little bit. So I'm going to need to get a little bit of weight on that. So we'll put some blocks of wood in the corners and put a little bit of weight on it to kind of push it down. If you have, you know, padded, padded pieces, that would work, work pretty well too, like that. And there we have it, all completed. It turned out really well. I, I really like these uh, areas like this that you can end up seeing the, the mirror through. I did want to point out again that these, the reason why we torched that back edge of that, this ended up pulling up just a little bit here in the middle, but because we torched that back edge, you can't really tell, which really helps out with hiding some of the little imperfections. It just kind of adds character. This turned out real well down here with the mirror that comes down here and cut through like that. I think that turned out real nice. And so overall, I'm very happy uh, with how this turned out. It's a really good piece and it's gonna make somebody really happy in their house. Again, the size of the mirror could have been bigger. And if you do it bigger, wider, you can actually set this piece up on its end. And some people choose to do that. Uh, I personally design them with the intent that they're going to be staying like this and having a definite top and a bottom, but usually if we're going to sell one, provide the hanger and they can hang it from the other side if they prefer or not use the hanger at all. But all in all, really great project. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe. We'd love to hear from you in the comments and we'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.